Yeah, I'm still on. Okay, now this image that we're seeing, this Bearcat with the LA County Sheriff's Department, it's taken a different position, kind of pointing directly towards the driver's side window of that white van. Um, you know how this process works. Uh, tell us about what we're seeing, what could happen next. What does this all mean? Yeah, they're using the Bearcat because they're in a position of advantage uh, structurally that is... Uh, uh, as strong a, a foundation to take a good put themselves in a safe position that uh, should something happen, should somebody open fire on the vehicle, uh, they're relatively safe in that position. So as they move forward now, they're looking to see everything they can see. It's a panel van, so you don't have the ability to look in the rear windows or any side windows. So they're trying to get as much information as they can by uh, basically hitting this thing from every angle they can to include the uh, the uh, drones. And so as they, they go forward, if they can, they'll also be in a position with Hazmat and the bomb squad out there to be able to try and obtain readings uh, should there be any hazardous materials there to be able to, in the parts per million, figure out do we have an elevated level of any substance. And that's very helpful then in deciding next steps. So there's uh, a lot of science goes on now that uh, a few years ago was not possible, but uh, they have all of that, uh, you know, at their disposal. So our hopes is that this is a safe, uh, a safe position for them to be in and that they can uh, as quickly as uh, appropriate be able to bring some resolution to this and, and, uh, and, and some closure to the people who are at this particular scene, at least. And we'll stop you right there. Uh, you may be on a slight delay. SWAT officers have moved in to the vehicle. They are at the door preparing to make entry. They have broken the uh, passenger side window. That window is now open. They are opening, uh, potentially opening the door. There is about more than a half dozen armed officers right at the door. Perhaps the side door will be the next to open. We now have the passenger side door open. Guns are drawn as they are moving in on this vehicle. You got to assume they believe this individual is incapacitated. The fact that they are going inside first. He's reaching over the lead officer to the driver's side. He has moved the seat and potentially this uh, sliding door here on the side is going to open next. Yes, they have their guns drawn. As you mentioned, um, the uh, Bearcat on the other side of the vehicle, making sure that they are safe from that angle as well. But we're waiting to see what the officers will do next. They've just broken the passenger window, opened the, that, that side of the, the van, about to open the side door. Um, they are all in position. One officer has just gotten into the passenger seat and taking a look back there. It doesn't seem like they are on high high alert just I mean the fact that he the, just uh, went all the right. way inside the vehicle the body posture there it seems like they they are not seeing too much of a threat at this point in time but they are of course still on guard um, one of the officers still appearing back okay. there the, it's uh, not a sliding door open. the doors are opening taking a look inside It's kind of hard to see from our view. It looks like they're still but, looking even further yes. back behind that door opening. They're pulling something out. Looks like a, a blanket of some sort. And former Sheriff Jim McDonald still on the phone with us. We, we thank you for sticking with us here. I mean, we're watching as everyone is at these images. Uh, this was a, a barricade situation for well over two hours here in Torrance, uh, the intersection of Hawthorne and Sepulveda near the Del Amo Fashion Center, now playing out live here on ABC7 Eyewitness News on air and online, abc7.com. And the situation has been unfolding here in Torrance since roughly a little past 11 o'clock. So it's been almost a couple hours uh, since we first saw this van uh, swarmed by Bearcats and officers moving in. So they have been monitoring for the past couple hours to make sure that there were no threats to any officers. They had a drone circling this van for a while, checking for um, explosives possibly in and around the vehicle for any movement inside the vehicle. Uh, we are still waiting to see and hear 
what is inside, if it was uh, the suspect they have been looking for, if it is that suspect with another person possibly. We don't know at this point in time, but it looks like that bear cat is um, moving away from the vehicle on the driver's side of the van. Gosh, even with the posture, which uh, was somewhat calm, given all the circumstances, it was really tense to watch that, not knowing what these uh, SWAT individuals uh, would find upon opening the vehicle. You even have one gentleman walking away there. So uh, we don't have the best vantage point to see all the way inside, including all the way in the back portion of that van, but it's still unclear if an individual uh, was in fact located in that vehicle. Um, they are continuing to to comb through that vehicle. Um, I was just so impressed by that initial SWAT officer who walked in through the front passenger side to uh, get that door open. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, they had some good information from the SWAT Bearcats that were uh, in, were there, had it pinned, and then from the drone that was looking in through the front dash. Uh, but still, uh, it's a tense moment nonetheless. You just never know. Yeah, you can never fully assume um, that that vehicle is completely safe. Um, but we did watch that officer break the front window, uh, the, the passenger front window, and reach in, unlock the vehicle. Um, it's, it's very difficult to see from our, our vantage point what's inside the van, and we may not know for a bit of time what exactly they find because they do control, um, law enforcement does control the information that is uh, released to the public as they um, continue their investigation. So we are just watching all of this unfold live. Um, many people still reeling and outraged and emotional over the shooting that happened last night. Absolutely. Jim McDonnell joining us again. Again, he's been on the phone with us, director of USC Safe Communities Institute. Um, you've seen the images now. Uh, I believe you were on a delay, but I'm sure you've seen the images now from Air 7 of those SWAT members going in. Uh, right. What do you make of what you saw? Yeah, it appears from what we know that they approached, they made sure that, uh, you know, that what they had uh, initially thought was confirmed. Uh, one of the operators then, as you mentioned, uh, you know, took the initiative to go in and be able to open the rear panel doors so that others could go in. Uh, there was one of the operators there with a backpack indicating that he was likely the tactical paramedic uh, on scene. And so if there was a, a need to render aid, medical aid, there was an ability to do that immediately. Uh, that does not appear to have been the case, and uh, that person also has the ability to be able to make a pronouncement uh, as to whether that individual, if there is uh, one in there, from we, we don't know anything for sure at this point, uh, but to, to pronounce somebody deceased as well, if that was uh, what the circumstances uh, dictated. Sure, I, I got to assume, you know, jump into conclusions from what we've seen here, that there are two options, either the van's empty, or if there was or is an individual in there, that person is deceased. Uh, we can't see a person deceased from our vantage point. There's a portion of the van with no windows uh, inside the doors to the left that they were searching. It's unclear if there is a possible person suspect in that portion of the van. Uh, but the law enforcement officers, those SWAT members, they have in most part, stepped away. There still are some to the uh, driver's side, door side, but those uh, those team members have stepped back from the van. They've gone through uh, the initial search of the vehicle. Uh, so there certainly was not a live suspect in the vehicle. If there was someone in that vehicle, that suspect uh, is passed away. The other option is that they did not find anyone. That would be a major concern. And again, uh, we are still waiting to hear from law enforcement on an update on this. We, we in our last press conference that we, we heard from them um, roughly about 45 minutes ago, we didn't have many updates on this situation. Um, but they did say that it, the suspect that they had been looking for was possibly in this white cargo van because it matched the description of what they had been looking for throughout the entire morning. Mm. Run this scenario by the possibility that the suspect was following the news updates and the alerts that law enforcement had put out that they were looking for a white cargo van and it was ditched here. Um, that certainly is a possibility and that this is where the vehicle was found. Um, that it matched the description, the possibility that they had the license plate and, and connect the dots on that. But after 
two plus hours, maybe three hours here on scene at this location, they maybe have not found anything inside in terms um, of a suspect. Uh, Jim McDonald, that obviously is speculation, but everything has to be on the table. Um, sure. We can only see what we see. And Jim, is that possibly why they are withholding some information? Okay, new information. Yeah. Uh, hold on, uh, sh Jim, there actually is a body. Yeah. There is a, a body um, in yeah. the driver's seat of the van. We okay. did not have a good yeah. uh, we did uh, not have good perspective on that earlier, and now we can see it. Of course, we're not going to zoom in, but I had eyes yeah. on it a moment ago, um, and there is a man who was in the driver's side, slumped over of this van. Um, yeah. Wow, what a development. Okay, speak to that. Yeah, you know that makes sense because if this was an abandoned van, they would have cleared it earlier. Uh, taken every precaution, but if there was no one in there, then the posture would have been different and they would have continued uh, doing the normal procedure for the investigation, the impound, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, that didn't happen.